I'm going to come down the Thinnis Road. And I've come along the Sleeve Crube Scenic Route. And I'm now hitting the junction of the, uh, the, the Carreg Road. And I'm coming to Sleeve Crube Scenic Loop again. And Legan Ali Dolman. And this, this is where I am after. I am after this Finnis suitor, and, and it's well signposted here. And I've just come a, a, along this Carrigaki Road towards Finnis, and I've spotted this wee road sign Finnis suitor in. Bender's Cove, and this is the wee pathway. This is a brilliantly preserved suitorine, and it's extensive, and it's just right up there on the hilltop, well, in that wee mini hill. If you are coming, uh, bring a torch, just in case. There, there is solar lighting, but some of the lights aren't working. And uh, wear uh, an old pair of jeans, for goodness sake, because you, you'll be on your hands and knees if you're anything like me. Don't wear your Sunday best. And this is well done here. We pathway to these gates uh, so that the cows can, can uh, uh, and the sheep can have free passage there. Without any escaping or being where they shouldn't be. And I never, I'd never really heard of suitorines. You're out in the middle of, of a field here, and, and you're coming across something that resembles uh, the entrance to an air raid bunker. But obviously, you know, this is all being put in. But how did the farmer ever find this? These stones around the, the entrance are, are obviously original. Let's have a wee look at this. Early Christian settlement, 5th century AD it dates from. As the ring forts used to decline, a further innovation in defensive architecture became popular, cedar rings. And this is what this place would have looked like. This is a cross section of the cedar ring. Cedar rings, a hidden underground component of the early Christian landscape. Shooterines are artificially dug or built underground structures, popularly known in the countryside as caves. And this is Bender's Cove. It might have been called Bender's Cave for all you know. Uh, often <laughs> there were deliberate obstructions down in these. Uh, primarily a place of refuge, occasionally storage. And this is uh, what you get in Bender's Cove or Finnis Shooterine. And they're, they're saying here that there might have been actually specialist builders of these suitorines that went from uh, place to place. And look at this. Lighting has been, has been provided in the suitorine. Here I am at the entrance and I've just uh, flicked the light switch. Now there's a very low lintel here so I'll just have to crawl through it. And this is, oh my goodness, this is definitely not for sort of heavy people or big tall people. You can see the light, actually the fire light's working and maybe, maybe uh, flash lamps working. But this is not, this is, uh, this is challenging folks, I'm afraid of hitting my head. Uh. 15 minutes to get in here oh, this is amazing construction this is totally gobsmacking I like down a miner's tunnel and if you have claustrophobia 
no, don't be coming down in here either. But the kids, the kids will love it. <laughs> You've even got a wee hand reel there, and I've just bumped my head. Oh my goodness. What's that? Right. And there's another. There's another path run the way off here. I think that's a bit of a dead end, maybe to, to fool people. Or is it a dead end? I, I can't even tell. Let's go up and see. I'm feeling the ears here. It's amazing to think that somewhere else did all this construction work. All those. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And it's dry in here, it really is dry. What's the size of these stones like? I'm, I'm hunkering along here, but I've had to go and hands and knees earlier. And that's my wee light, but there's light in behind me. Solar powered, really good. Oh, flip me. Oh, just bumped the head again. And that's my wee notes down there. Oh my goodness. Hands and knees again. Oh. I'm making heavy work with this, but then I am. 63. Oh, flip. But I thought I was fit, folks. I thought I was fit. This is quite a long, long passage. Now we pass it away off to the right, and it goes to a dead end again. Oh boy, I'm knackered. Some, some feat in constructing this, but you wouldn't do this in a week or two. There's a way back there today. There's a light. The, um, so what have we got up here? Should be another light on there, but obviously so there's a lot of people have brought me candles, and obviously I've had a party down here. <laughs> and there's a wee cupboard in here. And I wonder was that deliberately left, but I don't think so. I'm surprised not to see any type of carving. I'm just going to show you the roof. They're like uh, stone railway sleepers put across here. Of course they're not stone, or they're not railway sleepers. I'm soaked in sweat here. Oh. This is just amazing. It's just... I just can't believe this. In the middle of a farmer's field, how in the name of goodness did he discover this? This, this this place was discovered by uh, by a guy called Oliver Quayle, and it was restored. He did all the restoration by uh, Banbridge man. Now I wonder was he related to the Quayles of Banbridge, who are, who who used to sell 
our family, uh, they were butchers, sell us meat. And the landowner is, or was, I don't know if these two gentlemen are still alive, but the landowner uh, given permission for this, and, and this is just fantastic, as I say. Because it's not every landowner would do that. The landowner was uh, Pat O'Hare. It's well constructed. It's got vents. And it's just well preserved. Just heading for the, uh, the exit here, folks. And this is so, so like the inside of um, the New Grange Passage Tomb at Noth. But that's what it would remind you of, a passage tomb. But it's not. And I feel like one of the seven dwarfs. Um, the one I would be, be most like at this present moment in time would be Grumpy. My goodness gracious, I am knackered crawling along there. But it was well worth it. This is, a, this is an experience, folks. This is brilliant. And you pay nothing. It's just you have to find a place. But... Hopefully you'll, you'll come.